Bungie TV, is that new? Luke Smith! I used to love you on What Up Show! Good morning, everyone. I'm Luke. And I'm Mark, and we're coming here live from the Bungie Studios. Um, you know, uh, yeah. It is, if you've been on the internet the last few days, it is the leakiest shit on the internet. It's true. So what we've got today, we've got a cool show lined up for you. Behind us, you can see, you can see Dado getting ready, Dado, Ben, and Catherine. Dado. We're talk about Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, which is the next chapter coming out. Jez's father? But first, let's take a look at it. Oh, okay. Looking to the future. The heiress? Always brings us back to the past. It is. I can still hear their voices. Their endless torment reshapes our moon. Nightmares now stalk the surface. Walking shadows, seeking vengeance. Our old fears, they rise again. Like old bosses that we fought in like raids and, and next strikes and stuff like that? And in the dark below? Crota? Something wicked has awakened. Vault of glass? We must bring an end to this suffering. One way. September 17th on everyone's mind since Bungie's gone truly independent like that and, you know, complete control of destiny's future we're publishing the game now we're an independent company is now what what's the plan where are we headed so the way that we talk about where we're headed is like the way we've talked about over the years is what's the vision for what we're trying to do and so the vision for destiny going forward the destiny franchise is contained in like three parts the first part is being an awesome action MMO and yeah, we, we like, like we've been worried about that term for a long time. You know, we've we've shied away from using MMO. that. Yeah, because it it comes with a lot of baggage. It's like, does that mean it's a subscription game, or you yeah. got to play with a mouse and keyboard, or whatever? But like, man, you know, this is one of those things. We're on our own now, and it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Like we we can accept the. A little bit of auto sync like, with their audio. Like emojis out in the chat right now. But like when we say MMO, we don't mean like subscriptions. We're not. We don't mean we don't mean subscriptions. We do mean. Uh, two things. The first part where we're lacking right now, and we've like been getting better. Forsaken certainly adds to it, is improving the RPG. Yeah, we really, you know, okay. want deeper build customization for for our players and, and for your characters. Give me numbers you then. Kill machines, and you want to make them your own. Can't be an RPG without numbers. You so just can't. A bunch of what we're doing this fall is going to be about adding the stats back into the game. Okay. The game more than it was, and D2 launched launched away. Forsaken improved it, and we think. Shadow Keep's going to take that kind of to the, to the next level. Show me the so numbers. Part about what we mean when we say RPG is really important to us. It's about improving social. Like, this is a place where it can be hard to find grouping. It can be hard to make friends in Destiny. And what we've been saying for years, as we've been, like, dodging the MMO term, is, like, it's a game best played with your friends. And so this is one of the things that, on the long horizon of the Destiny franchise, like, we have to improve the social game. Yeah, like, and, and, and I just want to take a moment to say, this isn't changing anything about the core action game of Destiny. Like, it is so fun and amazing to shoot monsters in their in, in their heads, getting headshots, and see their souls escaping their body, and you yeah. slip behind cover. Like, at its core, Destiny is an action game. But we're also not afraid to say it's an action MMO, and that's where we're headed. We're taking steps there this year. And so part one of the vision, awesome action MMO. Part two of the vision for Destiny going forward is a single evolving world. And we have been, oh, we have been okay. close to the mark in some ways and far off in others. The way we've been close is stuff like what happened in Forsaken. When Raid Team goes into the Dreaming City, they kill Riven, and they launch this Dreaming City cycle that like transforms the world. And we think that's awesome, and we want to do more things like that. When the community gets to come together and discover secrets and, and, and solve problems and push the world forward and push that narrative forward, that's when the game really feels like it's not a game but a real world. 
Yeah, like the like for for people who don't know some, some of where I came from, like the in my time in in my time in WoW, the Scarab Lord Gates opening event was this moment that brought these huge communities together. I've never heard of that. It became, it became, it became this awesome event, and I think the potential of what we're trying to do with Destiny. I like some of the stuff they're talking about that, a lot. That, that uh, create bonds between players and let players work together to change the world. The third part of the vision here is play it anywhere. Yeah, we we want you to be able to play Destiny oh? anywhere with your friends. And you know we're definitely going to take some steps here this year. Crossplay? The first one. Well, I don't know which first you want to do. Like we're just coming off of the the Stadia the Stadia announcement, which is our partnership with Google. Yeah. So with Stadia, you know Destiny 2 is coming to Stadia this year, um, which is going to be awesome because it means you're going to be able to play Destiny anywhere you have a Chrome, Chrome browser with their controller, and that's going to be just incredible for our community. You know, you're not going to have to lug your PS4 home to your mom's place at Christmas anymore. You know, 81,000 people. A lot of people. Whatever. Like, you know, that's not a promise. You know who's been talking about this all the time? It's like Scott Taylor constantly talking about where he's going to play. Can't wait to play on my. Just list like lists a litany of devices that he wants to play. He wants to play Destiny on. And, like, he's and, that, and that story's just cracked wide open with Stadia. So we're super excited about that because it lets you literally play anywhere. So it's a great fit for the, the vision. And then the next thing, do you want to just jump? Like we have this. We have like our set list that we're moving through. Uh, and so the next thing on the list. There's been a little bit of talk about over the last like 24 hours. Like maybe you want to talk about cross save. So yeah, cross save is coming to Destiny 2 finally, um, and uh, we're super excited about that. What cross save is, it is about taking guardians that you've created and being able to play them on any platform. And uh, we are, you know, super excited about that. And we know except for PlayStation. And, you know, contrary to maybe what you've heard on the internet, because I just want to be super clear about this, cross save is coming to all platforms. Oh, okay. Xbox, uh, PC, and Stadia. And uh, let's refresh this. Let's refresh it. I think the audio is a little out of sync. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're super excited about that. And you know, Bungie and Sony are working together to ensure that Cross Save is coming to PS4 when Shadowkeep launches. For okay. Years we go. To That's exciting. With with companies, we'd like dodge this question so many times about like, oh, which platform do you play on? Which platform should you play on? Like, wherever your friends it, are. Yeah, our, like, our answer has always been like, oh, we're gonna like message back to like, yeah, the best place to play Destiny is where your friends are. But cross save makes that that statement actually true because you can go from PC to PS4 and you know, wherever you want to play the game, wherever your wherever your your group's rating is is where you can so play. So you've probably seen reports on the internet and and that may may be different to this. There's a reason we do these shows live. It's for the really awkward. Yeah, <laughs> it's for us like stammering back and forth. Uh, so the next thing on our list here, do you want to talk? Let's talk about yeah, like you a know, new entry point. when we when we think of you know anytime anywhere that third part of the vision, uh, you know, cross save Stadia, those are parts of it. But we have some real barriers to making that totally true and, and really uh, uh, making that a reality. When Forsaken came out last year, for instance, look in the first party stores. There's like nine different versions of the game you need like some kind of decoder ring to figure out what you're supposed to purchase it's like just way too confusing to figure out what you're supposed to buy so the reason to our answer to this like big problem is what if we just create a free entry point for the game and create a brand new way for players to well a brand newish way for players to enter the universe but there's still this problem of Oh gosh, I've got like 40 hours of game to play. I've got to like get through these campaigns, which you know are cool, but that's not really the part of the game that like, that matters if you're playing for like hardcore reasons. In the season of in op, a season of opulence, Menagerie just came out. It's a yeah. six-player match made activity. It's awesome. I love playing it. But if I'm going to re recommend it to a friend who's not playing Destiny, it's like, well, you got to buy this version of the game, then you buy this other version of the game, then you got to play all that. And I'm not going to play with you because you're, you're doing old stuff. And so it's going to take, it's, it's, it becomes hard to recommend. So we, we need to fix that. So the answer to this problem is New Light, where once you, enter, once you enter New Light, in 10, 15, 20 minutes, you now arrive at the part of the game that matters to you and your friends, where you're like jumping into Gambit, Crucible, et cetera. This is about crushing the barriers between friends and making it a game where you're like, there's something awesome happening in Destiny. I'm going to go check it out. And New Light's totally free. It's free. You download oh, it, okay. Uh, this We're going free to play. 15 minutes, you're playing Gambit Interesting. with bros or running around the EDZ. Gambit with my bros. It's how I live my life, baby. So the other part of this, like this like handshake, is the way we're thinking about 
selling the game differently now. We have, for years, had this like compounding purchase model, even something like the annual pass, which I think we've learned a bunch from, and you know, we, we have plans for how we're gonna iterate on it over time. It meant that up front you had to spend $35 rather than maybe purchasing things a la carte, and that strategy is a strategy that we're changing now that we, we are, we're in control. Yeah, if you think of New Light like a, a, a baseline, we're thinking of our content kind of like you know atomic packages that go on top of that. So Destiny 2 Shadowkeep is completely standalone. It's an, it's an expansion pack and it's standalone. It's an expand alone, I guess is what you would call it. You don't need to play Forsaken. You don't need to play Curse of Osiris, Warmind. You don't have to have played Drifter, none of it. You, you buy it and you jump right in. But you know, we want to do that with seasons too. And so going forward our seasons, you're gonna be able to jump in and have a great free experience and that's awesome. But if you want that, you know, access to some of the premium content, you can jump in and buy that season, you know, season eight separately from season nine. Yep. So another part uh, that we have huh, had that's trouble weird. with over the years is answering questions around things like exclusive That could be good or bad, depending on how they price it. Uh, exclusive activities, exclusive weapons, things like this. And those things violate kind of that second part of the vision, which is that single evolving world. So going forward and beginning this fall. Single community of players where everyone can be together, but you're like, well, let's play the strike. Oh, sorry, I don't have that strike on my box. So we want to want to remove those barriers. And now going forward, there's going to be no more exclusive activity content, no exclusive uh, gameplay things like exotic weapons. We're not, we're not doing any of that stuff going forward. Huh. So but how um, so? There's one more thing that I'm going to share. Curious about that. that. This year, um, you know, Destiny 2 on PC needs to find a new home. You know? Some would say we need to find an epic partner. <laughs> yeah. And, and Wha so we need wait, to find what? a new home. <laughs> and, uh, uh, because we're self-publishing Destiny now and, and, and we're truly on our own. And so Destiny 2 is going to be coming to Steam. And this means that... Uh, that's huge. Anyone currently playing Destiny 2, uh, they're going to be able to come over to Steam, you know, free of charge. They're going to continue their accounts. They're going to continue all their, all their possessions going to move over. Any licenses they had, any DLC, like whatever. It all comes over. And Shadowkeep, um, you know, the D2 expansion that's coming out this fall, um, is going to be shipping exclusively on Steam this year. It's kind of like when you relocate for a job, uh, and they relocate. That's big like news. Shows up at your house I kind of liked it being on BattleNet, man. I really did like there, but this time we're gonna, like, the BattleNet version of the friends list yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Steam's kind of clunky exactly with that, but gonna gonna be it's what website, everyone plays on, so that's huge. Describes it in more detail, um, but we want the transition to be really seamless for players and a really good experience. So a thing that we want to try to do to wrap all of this up is like do the like Instagram cut down version of everything we just talked about in like 20 seconds. So the vision for Destiny going forward is... Gabe is 23 months. He's the Michael Jordan of my stream. That means cross save across all of our platforms. We have a new platform that we're adding this year, Stadia. We have a new entry point for the game. All this stuff they're making for Destiny 2 sounds like 100% the right direction. So Shadowkeep... Season eight. Free to Let's play, say, moving the steam, foundation for some changes we want to make to tripping the walls down, to come back more here. RPG Maybe elements. Nine, we'll have something that's going to make you want to come back for sure. No more exclusives going forward for us in terms of gameplay and armor and weapons. And I love that. Game on PC, we're moving you to Steam. That's kind of like our, that's like the, that's the end of the set list. The encore, if we're carrying the music thing forward. Is this I think awesome? It, I think it's more than an encore. <laughs> yeah, actually, we are like we're, we're the opening act. Yeah, they've been watching two yeah. dudes talk to you <laughs> for twelve minutes or whatever. So, the main event is coming up. Dado's behind us, getting ready. But first, let's take a look at a new Vidoc called Out of the Shadows. Oh, okay. I love me some Vidoc. Sam Wolf Gibbs, what's happening? Everything so far for Destiny sounds great. Anywhere, uh, and I think beginning is an important. I want I want more RPG. I want more MMO. I want more hardcore. This is the first time I think that less you know, bullshit. Long time that Bungie has stood kind of on its own. Get Activision out of here. They suck. I mean, they don't suck. I, I just you know yeah, you know. Publishing, it's a really big deal. There's a huge opportunity here for us to really make our own decisions. It's a turning point for us. We are in charge of our own destiny. It's empowering and terrifying at the same time. There are only two groups who are gonna decide what happens to destiny next. Bungie and the players who play destiny. Curious to see how much changes without Activision around. So far, it seems like a lot already. I got you. Uh, 
Back on the moon. So at its core, Shadow Keep is about returning to the moon. We haven't been in the moon in a while since yeah. Destiny 1, and a lot's changed. When you go back, it isn't exactly what you thought it was. There's like huge cracks ripped into it. There's a weird scarlet fortress. And so the context of the moon has been updated entirely. This isn't just about the hive anymore. Oh, who's that dude? He but looks something sick. Else, something terrifying. The moon this time around is something really scary that is playing on your fear in a way that hasn't happened before. Before it was, oh, it's a big giant thing and it's scary, but now there's actual like some psychological elements to that. How long has it sat in silence watching us? Destiny's How music has always been amazing. Long. Having Eris Morin come back instantly signals God the damn it, Eris. I knew she was gonna be change. treacherous. There's an undertone of threatening and psychological horror. You're all insufferable! We want to tap into what makes Guardians afraid. What are their worst fears? Shadowkeep refers to the things that Eris unleashed on the solar system. Nightmares are manifestations of a Guardian's past. What if the villains that you thought were well into the ground actually weren't, and they were being resurrected by the darkness? Eris is trying to figure out how okay. to unleash this kind of madness, and so she needs your help. You can't just kill them and make them go away. What if you can't do all of the things that you've grown accustomed to doing? Being unable to achieve what you're trying to achieve, no matter how hard you try. Players, they think we can deal with this. We killed Crota, like we killed Oryx, like, no big deal, right? Well, you're gonna get there and you serve it's a bigger deal than you even thought it could be. The darkness is actually a lot closer than you realized. Now you know my suffering. Okay. We got Sauron, we got Lord of the Rings. Unfinished business. I know people who work at Bungie, and it's, I'm excited for them to have an opportunity to it's been a year, basically, really relaunch this thing. Two-way dialogue with all of our passionate players. Under it or on the sides of it more. The number of green That's really informed what it is that players want out of the Destiny game and how we're evolving, not just the story of the world, but what happens to you as a guardian. The, the thing that's supposed to blow you back or whatever, it's related to acceleration. A bunch of the work that we're doing is about adding depth to the character sheet. You know, the teams are thinking about numbers, how evolve armor, get more stats into the game. More stats. More customization. How that's all I've been wanting this whole time. For how you it's like, seriously. This awesome character you've been building now for, you know, some of us five years. And like completely new ways of deepening the like character RPG that we all know and love yeah. and want to be better. Yeah, they said their vision is to make it an MMO. Like, embrace the MMO part instead of running away from it. In Shadowkeep, we are fundamentally evolving the systems and moving the world forward. You want to bring some of that sci-fi element back to it, where it's yeah, like some like panel yeah, or exactly. something. We've been dancing this line between, I'm like, are we RPG enough? Are we not RPG enough? And now we're like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go all in and just say, like, let's give players what they want. Well, what was that? Allow them to kind of like customize the players and their their habits and their game modes and all that stuff as much as they want to. So in Shadowkeep, what we're doing is changing the way that armor perks and mods work pretty significantly. Right now in the game, if you have an armor set that you like the look of, but you have another armor set that you like the way it plays, you're probably gonna pick the one that you like the way it plays. Yep, he's not wrong. 2.0 is focused on allowing Whoa. you to take the mods that you've unlocked and apply them to any given piece of armor. When I move my cursor over one of these mod sockets, it immediately shows me all of the mods that are available to me. What is that? I saw numbers. Personally, I'm excited about the artifact. Players just get to kind of like fidget with these knobs and switches and do all the things that they want to do. When you get to this last tier, each of these perks 
gets relatively close to what it, an exotic might feel like. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, that looks interesting. Finishing moves are a new thing. Finishing for moves? Kazi. What's your favorite? Whoa! There's some crazy ones for the hunter. This awesome flourish where he actually does like spin in front of him, has two knives, <clears> and then just hits, hits. I was like, what the heck? Like, what game is this? Oh, yeah, fuck those things. Yeah, Titan finisher. He jumps in the air, pulls back, looks at his fist, and. Super punch Titans? Yes, YOLO Titans. It's kind of like the dunk. There's so many different ways to dunk. You can behind the back, you know, 360, cartwheel, whatever. Wait, a cartwheel dunk? I haven't seen anyone do that yet in the dunk contest, sir. Sam, you don't need to be broke. It's going to be free to play. Day. Even your cheap out. ass can play with us. What do people want? What Everyone hop back in Destiny. For? Let's just start playing. Let's get a raid going. NTF style. I am working on an exotic heavy bow. Um, and I'm just working on figuring out some knockback, trying to see how big this... Okay, that's probably too much. But you get the idea. Oh. This is an exotic trace rifle. Fire it on an enemy and it creates a big old crit spot. Here's a hand cannon that Ooh. Victor's working on. It fires special ammo and it's a little bit like a, a one-handed sniper. Like it's actually our only hand cannon with a scope on it. Right now it kind of lights you on fire if you keep firing it too much. We'll see. Some people like it, some people are kind of eh, but uh, we'll hammer it all out. Interesting, they're, they're willing to show so much behind the scenes. They really wouldn't show this stuff too much before, the, the we nuts and bolts. On, especially with Season 8 and the start of Shadowkeep, is a renewed focus on PvP. You're all on the other team. <laughs> We're updating labs to include some much-loved game types from the past. We're also redoing a bunch of the playlists and how they work, but the really important thing for players to know is this is just the beginning. This is us building the foundation of what we're doing with the Crucible going forward. Previously, you would have a 20, 40, 60 hour climb before you could do what's considered in-game content. And now you can pretty much do that immediately. Okay. We want you to feel like you are in the end game from the moment you step on the planet. Leveling up your guardian and becoming more powerful, overcoming dungeons. They're going free to play this September, along with cross save. So no matter where you play it, it's the same character. And Shadow Keep will be the first paid expansion. While the entire base game and everything up to this point will be just free to hop in. With That's Forsaken, we've and it's going to Steam instead of Battle.net. ...to customize and personalize their character and, and differentiate themselves. Shadowkeep's going to push even further in that direction. The word which is really guiding us in a bunch of ways is death. It's about experiential death. When we look at how we're thinking about the next three, five years, it's really important to us. It's cool to have a game... That's a cool-looking level. Your friends ...tweak your monster-killing machine and make it 2% better every weekend, doing different things and figuring out how to craft this perfect build that you feel like is your own. Like, that is cool. There's nothing nerdy about it. We're, like, happy to own that. We're going to stand on that corner. I mean, it's, so far, they're addressing, like, a lot of the issues... I had with the game, change. or have. Uh, if the game doesn't feel like it's changing to meet the new landscape, it just all fall down. You know, part of our, our DNA is finding different ways to bring people together. We needed a way to crush the barriers between friends. We all have friends who could play Destiny, who are interested in it, um, but then we think about recommending it, like, oh man, you're gonna have to play about 40 hours by yourself, and then you gotta pay all this money, and you know, maybe you should just play something else. And that can't be the story. We need it an entry point for your friends to be able to get into Destiny. This is just simply about bringing people together to make it easy for players to enter this universe. 
There's a, a new entry point coming out in September called New Light, and New Light is a free to download experience. We're gonna start off in the same place where Guardians first came into the world. Guardian. Curious about this. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. It worked. What? We're going back to Destiny 1? You're yeah. going back. Going back. The yeah. Cosmodrome, yes! Okay. Let's go! I want but Destiny 1 stuff and Destiny 2 so bad. It's as easy as come in, make a character, play the amazing introduction to the game. And then land in the tower. And then we'll set them loose to open up the world as they see fit. And have sort of an array of potential in front of you. That's really interesting. You can just start playing the game and get into some of the same activities that your friends might be playing. The campaigns from D to Year One, The Red War, Curse of Osiris, Warmind. Every world we have will be available for them to explore and to free roam and to do bounties on. Every cooperative strike, whether they're playing with friends or matchmaking, every competitive multiplayer map. The D2 Year One raids like Leviathan. Full access to, to Gambit, the, the hybrid mode that we have. All these things are available to them for nothing. That's really smart. That's a really smart way to approach it. Really smart. Yep, you'll be able to move your PS4 to your Xbox. When you play it with your friends. And we're trying to make it easier. So if your friends who are playing Destiny are on different platforms, we're adding cross saves so that you can move between the different platforms and play wherever your friends are. Like if I'm playing and I want to move over to my PC, I should have my character go with me. We want Destiny to meet you wherever you want to play. So that's in incredibly important for us. We wanted to cross save before we shipped Destiny 2, right? Like, it, like a bunch of it was built. We just couldn't get there for capital R reasons. Um, and uh, many of those reasons have uh, disappeared. So AKA we Activision. Kind of when they say reasons, they mean Activision. And how we're going to give the players what they want. I appreciate the candor of them being just so upfront about this stuff. Our original vision for Destiny was a was a world that would evolve and change. We're leaning really hard into that because we believe that's where the future of Destiny is. The long horizon for Destiny is to become an evolving world. You know, it's you're going to tune in to see what's going to happen next. We can completely build Destiny in the vision that we want it to be in. A vision that isn't dictated by a commercial model or a business plan, but our creative vision and what we want to do for our players and what they want us to do with Destiny. I mean, it's jumping tanks. We feel like our work isn't done. We have a series of missions that we need to finish before I think we have Destiny in the place that it needs to be. And we're back to, I guess, finish the fight. So to speak. Wow, use the Halo catchphrase. Big bold words right there, Luke Smith. But I know Luke Smith loves Halo and he loves WoW. So if he starts taking more of both of those and putting it in Destiny, I'm all for it. 